Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we will be discussing about criteria four of National Board of Accreditation, which relates to student performance. And here we are going to look uh, with respect to 2024 SAR. So this criteria four, uh, which totally carries of 120 marks, 95 marks has been allotted to just data and numbers. Greater the numbers, higher the marks. So remaining 25% is very much related to professional activities, student performance, student publication, magazines and other things which we will discuss in the coming slides. So the first part of this is the enrollment ratio in first year which carries 20 marks. So the greater the number of students getting into the department, higher the marks that you are going to get. So there is no much complication that is involved with respect to enrollment ratio. It is very simple as you look at this table, N is the sanctioned intake of the program in the first year as per the norms. N1 is the total number of students admitted in first year minus the number of students who migrated to other program institution plus number of students who migrated to this program. So N1 is a very rare category nowadays. So if a student goes from your department to another department or from your institution to another institution and from any other institution comes and joins your department or your institution, such of those students should be mentioned over here. So N4, total number of students admitted in first year via supernumerary quota. So if there are any students with this quota, you need to mention those numbers. So here for CAY, which I've considered as 24, 25, Sanction intake for the program if it is 60, then my N1 I have considered it to be 60 with all clauses and N4 I have taken it as 0. So my total enrollment ratio for CAY 24-25 stands out to be 100 with respect to the formula that is given over here. That is enrollment ratio is equal to N1 plus N4 divided by N. So what is N1, what is N4 and what is N? is mentioned in the table over here, multiplied by 100 to convert it into percentage. Similarly for CAY M1, I have considered it to be 60, N1 as 58 and N4 admitted through a supernumerary quota as 2 and then my total intake again becomes 100 over here. And for CAY M2, I have made a small change like N1 I have considered to be 56 of 60 and here for a quota entry it is 0 so it is 56. When I take this percentage average so my average ER for 3 years is going to be 97.77. So the ER points so to, for total 20 marks if I put my average value of enrollment ratio for first year multiply it by 20 then I'm going to get a certain value which is equivalent to marks. So here I'm getting somewhere around 19.92 which is equivalent to 20 marks. So more than 92 or 93% of students entering the department with respect to sanctioned intake, your marks for enrollment ratio can be full. So here is a split of, of marks that you have. So greater than 90% of students enrolled in the first year on an average over three academic years the marks you are going to get is 20. If it is greater than or equal to 18%, then it is 17. If it is greater than or equal to 70%, it is 14. If it is greater than or equal to 60%, it is 11. Greater than or equal to 50%, it is 8. Greater than or equal to 40%, it is 5 marks. So next 4.2, which is success rate of the students in stipulated period of the program, uh, which carries 15 marks. So again, a very simple calculation given as per the table. Here we are taking it as LYG, LYG M1 and LYG M2. So LYG is nothing but CAY M4, CAY M5 is LYG M1 and CAY M6 is LYG M2. So A is the number of students admitted in the first year of that batch and those actually admitted in second year via lateral entry plus the number of students admitted through multiple entry if any and separate division if applicable minus the number of students who exited through multiple entry if any. So combining all this it is equivalent to A. So this data will be putting it over here which I have considered it to be 52. B is the number of students who graduated from the program in the stipulated course duration. So a student who has graduated out in a BE program if it is four years in a four year of time 
how many number of students have been graduated or they should not have any uh, regular backlog withheld at that time so such of those student numbers have to be considered over here under section b so i have taken for example to be 46 52 is the total number of students entered in first year and also via lateral entry and other options of entry and exit and total number of students passed out in the stipulated period 46 so if i take the percentage which is success rate is equal to b by a into 100 it comes out to 88.46 similarly for lyg m1 i have considered 56 number of students and under section b who have passed out is 52 which comes to 92.85 and for lyg m2 i have considered 58 56 and the percentage is coming somewhere around 96.55 and average of LYG, LYG M1 and LYG M2 is coming somewhere around 92.62. So after getting this average value, I put it in a formula. SR point that is success rate points is equal to 1.5 into average SR by 10. My average SR is 92.62 by 10 into 1.5. If I do, then I'm going to get somewhere around 13.88, which is equivalent to 14 marks. So greater the number, higher the marks. Similarly was the case with respect to enrollment ratio. Greater the number of students coming into the department, higher the marks. Greater the number of students successfully graduating out in a stipulated time, higher the marks. So the next ac uh, aspect of this is academic performance of first year students of the program. So we have three different uh, scenarios over here, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 which does the same thing like academic performance of first year students, second year students and third year students. The formula and calculation and the table is going to remain same. Only the year and the numbers are going to change. So here, if you look at the table, X is equal to mean of first year grade point average of all successful students on a 10 point scale. If it is a CGPA system of awarding the marks or points, or if it is a percentage system, then mean of the percentage of marks of successful student in first year divided by 10. So even if it is percentage, you'll be converting it to point. If it is a grade point system, then directly you're going to get the cumulative grade point average for the first year, you'll be taking it over here. So average of all the students, I've considered to be 7.46 on the highest value of 10. So total number of successful students, 58 have considered. Total number of students appeared in the examination is 60. So academic performance index is calculated by the formula X into Y by Z. So X is the number of students. Uh, this is a, X is the mean of the successful student CGPA. Y is the total number of students. Z is the total number of students appeared in the examination. So I'm getting my APY, API for CAY M1 as 7.21, for CAY M2 as 6.37 and CAY M3 as 6.20. So average API is again summation of these three API divided by three, which I'm getting as 6.59. So the important clause over here is, how do you define a successful student? So what is a definition of successful student? So when you're calculating the academic performance index of a first year student, so the total number of successful student is equivalent to those number of students who are eligible to enter second year. So the number of students who are eligible to enter to second year are considered as successful students in first year. So out of 10 marks, if my average point is 6.59, then this is the mark that is allotted for 10 for API for first year. Similarly, academic performance for second year students of the program is carries 10 marks. So again, successful students are those who have to be proceeded to the third year. So previously it was who have to be proceeded to the second year for first year uh, academic performance. Here for second year academic performance, students who will be proceeding to the third year. Similarly, academic performance for third year is a successful students are those who will be proceeding to the final year. So this totally combined together carries 30 marks. So more the number of success is greater the marks that we are going to achieve. So until 4.1 till 4.5, what we saw here, greater the number, greater the marks. So it is just a number game on how we are going to use it for our benefit.
So the next part 4.6 is placement, higher studies and entrepreneurship which carries a large chunk of mark which is 30 marks. So again here we have a formula to calculate placement index point is equal to 0.3 into average placement index. Now how do I calculate this average placement index? Again we have a table for this. FS is the total number of final year students. X is the number of student placed. Y is the number of students admitted to higher studies. Z is the number of students taking up entrepreneurship. So here we have to calculate it for LYG, LYG M1, LYG M2. So just for the calculation purpose, I have taken final year students in LYG to be 56, among which 32 students have been placed, 12 students have been admitted to higher studies, and two students have taken up entrepreneurship. In LYG M1, it is 54 number of students in total, 28 students placed, 14 for higher studies and zero entrepreneurs. In LYGM to 24 placed, 10 higher studies, one entrepreneur. And if I summate this number of student placed, number of students admitted to higher studies and number of students taking up entrepreneurship for LYG, LYGM1, LYGM2, I'm going to get this. And I use the formula placement index is equal to X plus Y plus Z divided by FS, total number of final year students into 100, then I'm going to get a percentage of placement index and average of that I am going to get 73.31. I use this average placement index in the formula 0.3 into 73.31 which I am going to get 21.9 and this is the mark that I am going to get out of 30 for 4.6 that is placement higher studies on entrepreneurship. So until here 4.6 from 4.1, it is going to carry 95 marks. So for this 95 marks, more the number, more the marks, either with respect to entry of students, with respect to success rate of student, with respect to academic performance of students, with respect to placement, entrepreneurship, or higher studies. More the numbers, more the greater the quality and greater the marks. So and remaining 25 marks is allotted to professional activities which includes student performance, student participation at state level, national level, winning prizes, participation in conference, uh, jotting down the news magazines, letters, journals, and other things. So to sum up this criteria four of student performance, higher the admission, better the marks. Student successfully moving to next year through vertical progression fetches higher marks, right? So success index or academic performance index depends on success rate. So success rate is equivalent to number of students who have successfully passed or moving on to next academic year. So focus on quality teaching and assessment will lead to better results. So this whole criteria of National Board of Accreditation with respect to new outcome is all focusing on better practices of teaching, better practices of assessment and better practices of outcome with respect to student learning. So better results and success rate leads to better placements, higher studies and entrepreneurship, which will again boost the grading system with respect to marks and also with respect to students' performance. So this is one of the important criteria where we can easily score a mark if we have a greater number. Thank you. See you all again with respect to another criteria or another sub clauses with respect to National Board of Accreditation as per NBA SAR 2024. Thank you.